Hey guys, welcome back. Chris and Randy here with Marksman Shooting Sports and WeBuyGuns.com in Westfield, Indiana. You are watching Marksman TV. Again today, back by popular demand, we have another unboxing video. We have maybe about eight or nine here uh, that came in today. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into them now. All right, guys, first, before we get into this video, something really funny happened today. So we got in a shipment from Amazon, which typically only happens when we order stuff and we didn't order anything recently. And we got in the, <laughs> we opened the box and sure enough, box cutters. Somebody sent us box cutters. So I know I use the scissors to open boxes and it gets a lot of people upset in the comment section, which is one of the reasons that I've kept doing it because I just thought it was funny to just keep doing it. Sort of become a little, you know, I don't know, shtick. Uh, for the videos, but somebody did send box cutters. So thank you uh, for doing that. And uh, we will move forward with the appropriate equipment for these videos. Thank <laughs> so, you. And we got a really good laugh out of that. Also, another thing is we have camera number two set up. Uh, so as we unbox these, we can show you guys some close-ups of the firearms we're looking at. So very first one getting into first box with this box cutter. I am probably gonna hurt myself with this. All right, our first one today. Like there's a couple <laughs> box cutters. Feels like there's a couple in there. Okay, so we have a couple firearms here from Florida. So thank you to the seller of these. First up, we have what looks like an HK. It's an HK VP9. Nine millimeter, of course. For those of you guys who are not familiar with the VP9, um, these hit the market from HK maybe about, I wanna say five or so years ago uh, to compete in the polymer frame line at about the five to $600 price point. They've gone up a little bit since then. These are excellent handguns. Um, actually probably rated in my top five for a striker fire polymer frame handgun. Really, really good recoil impulse. Really comfortable with back straps and interchangeable side plates. Uh, let's take a look at the paperwork and see, is it this one? It might be. Yes. First, I'm going to take a look and see what I think. There's virtually no wear marks or anything on this. So I'm going to say that this is an excellent condition. And it's got its original box and everything like that. What are we looking at in terms of condition? Uh, customer says excellent. Yep, and I call it excellent. So there's that first one. Let's see what is in the other box. So we have a GSG 1911 and 22 long rifle. Really good, nice training implements for those people who are going to, uh, you know, have a full size 1911. It's actually the exact same size as just a government. That would be government, yeah, government size mm -hmm. 1911. So good training implement, and they're not super expensive. What do you put on a uh, condition on that one? Uh, I would say excellent condition. Yeah, excellent. There's very little to no signs of use on that one. Nothing even on top of the barrel. So yeah, definitely excellent would be a fair sort of summary for that one. All right, let's move on to the next one. We have obviously a Glock. Glock model what? Uh, 17, this is an MOS. So an optics ready Glock 17. These are really nice handguns. Um, what would you look at in terms of the condition on that one? I would say excellent condition. Yeah, so this one, again, no wear marks at all. You typically get a line of wear right up here on top of the barrel, which I don't see any of that. I mean, virtually no sign of use. So really, really nice condition comes with the three magazines and everything so yeah a customer did rate it at excellent i totally agree with that so not much else to say about that the glock 17 if you guys have never handled one and many of you guys know who watch these videos that i am a big fan of the 17 um this one of course mos so it's the modular optic system so optics ready so really cool handgun happy to get that in we will move on to the next one all right next up this comes to us from new jersey thank you for Man, I'm not good at using box cutters. Scissors for a paper cut. This is the emergency room. <laughs> yeah, see? 
I will probably revert back to my scissors eventually. Okay, so here we have a Makarov, and this is actually one of the German Makarovs. It has aftermarket grips on it. A lot of these came into the country um, with just the non-standard Bakelite grips, although you can get those pretty inexpensively. They're like 25 to $35 on eBay. Uh, the, the the German ones would have had the black Bakelite grips, not the like the red with the star you see from Bulgarian and Russian Makarovs, but these are really, really, really nice. Uh, a lot of people like these. They're just a feeling they feel more smooth than the Bulgarian ones. Uh, they're all great, but very, very nice. Really nice high polish blue on that. Um, being surplus, I would call this surplus excellent. I use a slightly different grading system when I'm looking at a surplus firearm, mainly from stuff that hasn't been made for such a long time um, that most of them are in poor, you know, fair condition they've been used. So something that's got very, very little signs of use to make it that long uh, through history without seeing a lot of, uh, you know, wear or anything on it. Um, you know, something in this condition would be difficult to find. So I would call the surplus excellent. Customer says, very good. If we're using like a modern like Glock 19 or something standard, yeah, I could say very good. There's just very, very minor signs of use. But for as far as Makarovs go, this is in excellent condition. So there is that one. Randy, what's in the other one? The other one here is a CZ model 52 or VZ Visor 052. 762 by, um, by 25. Um, I've had these on the channel before. This is sort of a roller locking system, if you will. Um, very, very smooth. If you guys have never fired the 762 by 25 round, it is a smoking little round uh, made popular by the Russian TT-33. Uh, so this one, I would say, for being a surplus firearm, is good to very good condition. Uh, let's see what it is the customer said. Customer said good. So yeah, for what it is in this condition, I would say that that is a fair value. Uh, but anyway, really, really cool. I love getting these surplus types of firearms in. So there's that one for you. Next up is something from a customer in Illinois. Let's see what we got here. Something in the middle of there. Oh, I remember what this is. Oh, wow. I'm going to pass that one off to you also. This is a little 1913, which is actually, I believe, model 19, when they say model 1920, but I'll kind of explain this. This is um, Sauer and Sons early World War I era pistol, 32 caliber. Uh, of course, these also would have been used in, to some extent in the Second World War and picked up and brought home as war trophies. That, for its age, is beautiful. And I remember seeing this one come through the site and it looks to all be original. I'll have to look at the serial numbers and make sure that they're matching. But it's got its original holster with one magazine. But the really cool thing about this is it has capture papers. For those of you who don't know what these are, in the Second World War it was very common. Troops could capture things, bring them home. Uh, this particular one was brought home in 1945. Uh, it would have been signed off by your NCO or your you know, commanding officer uh, that would allow you to then bring this home as a captured war trophy. So this was actually picked up likely somewhere in Germany. Um, could have been a civilian sidearm. It's actually unit marked. Yeah, it's actually unit marked here on the front. Could have been from World War I, I'm sure it was. Uh, kept as a you know surplus firearm somewhere in Germany uh, from World War One, picked up by a U.S. troop, and you know 1945 was brought home as a war souvenir. So really cool history on that little pocket pistol, uh, and really happy to get that in. Customer rated this. I mean, I would say for its age, and again surplus, you know, depending on a lot of these things are over 100 years old. I would call that very good to excellent for its age and what it is. And the customer called it good, uh, which is a reasonable assessment, but I remember, you know, in the photos, it looked like it was in, you know, very, very good condition. So uh, anyway, there is that really, really cool to see that and get that on the video there. So one of the things that I like to do, or that I'm going to start doing in this video is answer some questions about used guns and buying used guns and things the way that our website works that we get from previous videos. So. 
An interesting question that I got from a viewer on yesterday's video was, have we ever received a firearm that showed up loaded? That's an interesting question. We receive lots and lots and lots of firearms. There's only been one case where a firearm has shown up with the magazines loaded. Actually, I think the magazine was loaded and inserted in the firearm, but the chamber was empty. Uh, that's why it's always good when you check a firearm to remove the magazine first, then check it clear, because even if it's empty and you have a loaded mag in there, you could be chambering around. Uh, if there's like a, a stuck firing pin, you might get a slam fire off of it if you do that. Uh, so, um, yes, to answer your question, uh, whether you want to call that loaded or not, a loaded magazine inserted in the firearm, that has happened one time. So, I have had also a couple where I've, uh, actually in two cases, where I've um, uh, racked the slide back and a snap cap came out. So, I've had that happen, which of course makes you kind of freak out a little bit at first. Uh, but to find out that it's actually a snap cap, not a live round, I wouldn't recommend doing that either, but that has happened. Okay, next up, where does this one come from? This one is from Michigan. So thank you so much for sending this one to us. Looks like we have a Smith & Wesson. Six eighty six three fifty seven Magnum. So we've got yet another six eighty six. I don't mind getting these things in. These things are awesome. So I love seeing them come in. Um, what would you rate the condition on that one? I would say very good. Maybe very good plus. Yeah, that's exactly how he rated it. So if we put it down, uh, showing you guys here. I mean, there's. Uh, actually, if I, let me take a look at it. I would say very, very minor sort of micro scratches and stuff in the metal. Nothing serious. This is the standard model, not the plus. Definitely see some, uh, you know, powder burn off marks or scorch marks, whatever you want to call them on the face of the cylinder, which is pretty typical. So there's been a few rounds through it. You could kind of tell, um, but otherwise pretty clean. So yeah, very good would be a pretty honest assessment of this firearm. But you guys know I love the 686 revolver. This one's got a four inch barrel on it, so pretty cool. All right, next up we have one coming to us from also New Jersey. A couple from New Jersey. All right, here we have a Kemper stainless lightweight. With one, two, three, four, five, six magazines. And this one is a nine millimeter. Very, very cool. Not really much to say about Kember. A lot of you guys know about their products, pretty well respected on the market. It is a lightweight with the alloy frame, a full government size. And all these are, this actually isn't a Series 80. This is, does not have the safety plunger in the back. But good feeling handgun. There's a little bit of a holster wear line right up here across the top. So there's some holster wear there. Other than that, I'm not seeing there's more holster wear kind of there on the bottom of the barrel. So other than that line of holster wear there and holster wear there, I'm not seeing anything. So I would call that probably the high end of good, the low end of very good because of that. You can only really see it in the right light. Let's see what the customer says. Cust customer says very good. So that's fair. Um, believe he actually even in the description pointed out the holster wear said that there was holster wear on it so that's fine uh, I can live with that for sure all right last up we have um, I didn't look at the label but we'll look here in a minute Where's this one from? Arizona this one's coming to us from Arizona something else. okay while well, Randy gets that we'll see what's in here A stock and a bunch of scorpion magazines. So I'm sure that this is a CZ scorpion. And a CZ scorpion. Okay, so while Randy gets that out, this is a scorpion Evo 3 S1 9mm carbine. Very nice firearms. Remove the butt stock probably just for shipping. That just slides right on the button here in the back pushes. That's how you can get a brace on like a pistol and everything like that too. But probably regarded as one of the most popular and best PCCs on the market. They've gotten a little bit expensive. The CZ line, we talked to a distributor and said our, 
like the CZ prices went up like what, 30%? Yeah, whatever. close to that. Yeah, 30%. So they're getting a little bit pricey now, which is really weird. Uh, but a good quality used one should be a good opportunity to save some money from those ever increasing prices. But yeah, this one has a added magazine release there and charging handle. So lots of magazines, a really, really cool package. So again, I don't know if you have anything you want to say about it. No. So again, a uh, big thank you to our customer in Arizona for sending this one to us. And that's going to wrap up this video. All right, guys, well, that is all we have for you today on this one. Thank you so much for stopping by and checking out this video. If you have any questions, leave those down below in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, please let us know by hitting that thumbs up button. Also, uh, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit that bell notification button so you are aware when we are posting new content. Well, I guess we will leave it off there. I am Chris. And I am Randy. <laughs> we will see you guys next time.